Next, we have William Clark, also known as Will. He is number 98, a defensive end from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He's a redshirt senior, and you may not know this, but his father starred in basketball at Duquesne University. Will is a major in criminology and investigations. He's involved with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And this past summer, I did two videos for middle schools, and they're actually on our website, sayso.wvu.edu. One is called Bullying is Never Okay, and the other is called Character Own It, and they feature 12 athletes and the Mountaineer. Will was one of the athletes selected for that, so I was real proud of the job that he did there. The title of his speech is Neither an Anchor Nor a Sail. I went to Alderdice High School in Squirrel Hill in Pittsburgh. Squirrel Hill is a nice neighborhood. <clears throat> However, the neighborhoods that feed into it aren't that nice. The high school is comprised of about 1,200 students. About half of them are African American. Some of you guys might be familiar with rappers Wiz Khalifa and Mac Miller. I went to school with them. Most of my friends were African American. We played high school football together, hung out together, so we had similar lives. However, there was one aspect of our lives that was quite different. I was the only one who had a father who was a consistently active and involved parent. Pope John 23rd once said, it's easier, to have a father, it's easier for a father to have children than for children to have a real father. Fortunately, my sister and I have a real father. My dad didn't always, my dad didn't tell me how to live. Instead, he lived and I watched him do it. I wasn't always six foot six. From the time I was a small boy, my dad made me want to be someone. He played high school basketball and went on to play at Duquesne University. Even though I was interested in sports and wanted to play, I also thought that being an athlete would make him proud of me. While my friends played only football, I also ran track and played basketball. Anytime I had a game or a meet, I was confident that my dad would attend. That was not always the case for my friends. Sometimes it would be family members in the crowd, sometimes it was nobody. Even though that occurred from time to time, from, from the time that I first got involved in sports in grade school, I didn't realize the importance of his support until I entered school and saw that others didn't have it. Even though he didn't realize it, my father pushed me to beat the odds. First, he let us know what was right and what was wrong. For example, he reinforced the idea that gangs and drugs were not for us. As a result, my sister and I were never in trouble with the law or in school. He also reinforced the importance of getting a good education. Therefore, I will be the only male in my family to graduate from a four-year university. My sister graduated from a community college and is now taking classes to be certified to work with children who have special needs. Third, my father was very protective and wanted to make sure that we had what we wanted, that we had what we needed even though sometimes we didn't want it. When I was a freshman in high school, I realized that I was having vision problems. When I told my dad, he said he would look into it. I refused to wear my glasses during football games, and he said that he was going to take me to see an eye doctor. I asked for contacts, but my dad had another idea. He said I was getting sports goggles. <laughs> Not understanding contacts, he was afraid that one would pop out while I was playing. I tried to pull the mom card and plead with her for contacts, but that didn't work. <laughs> he insisted that I was going to wear them, and I did. It wasn't quite, it wasn't quite as bad for football because the helmet hit them, and I, was, and I was farther from the crowd. However, basketball was another story. At the championship basketball game in my freshman year, I was sitting on the bench without my goggles on. I would hold them in my hand, trying to hide them, hoping that the coach wouldn't put me in so I didn't have to wear them. But I got in the game with two minutes left. I put on my goggles, praying that the two minutes would fly by. The fans were laughing at me, and I was very embarrassed. At the same time, I was furious with my father. After the game, he came up to me, and he realized for the first time how, embarrass how embarrassing the goggles were for me. I told him that I was never wearing them again and that I was going to ask my mom to help me get contacts. I'm happy to report that I got contacts and life has been great ever since. <laughs> the absentee father is a big problem in society today. 
Research has shown that many adult sons who are abandoned by their fathers have problems developing self-confidence, forming lasting emotional attachments, recognizing their feelings, or being expressive with people they care about. I have some friends like that. We need to remember this quotation. A father is neither an anchor to hold us back, nor a cell to take us there, but a guiding light whose love shows us the way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to thank uh, Coach Mitchell, Oliver Luck, President Clemens, like, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> Quincy in the back, Coach Tucker, Miss Sandy, um, the other people in the back, Darwin Cook and Mallory, how y'all doing? And um, Miss Kelly, Miss Amy, and Miss Lindsay, the uh, academic advisors. Thank y'all. I like the way Darwin Cook raises his hand just in case you would forget that yeah. he's here. That's good. All right.